Hey guys, welcome back to the, the Little Guy, which I am, and this is my channel. So thanks again for coming. If you are rolling with a small machine shop and you have a small bench lathe and small mill or Vicky Verka, and you're making your own tools, which is the best part about having a small machine shop, you've probably got one of these tool posts that came with your lathe. It's simple, it's rigid, you know, you can stick four tools in there supposedly and then be able to quickly move them around, but the most annoying thing is constantly putting it on center height. You're using a bucket load of shims, you know, people are getting around using cut down bloody uh, strip gauges and all kinds of weird things. I've seen someone pull apart a uh, the binding, that metal binding that people put around in crates and things like that, it works fantastic, but it's annoying. So what people usually turn to, me, guilty of, is one of these things. They're cheap, they're from probably China, I don't know. It comes with a whole heap of attachments, it comes with a whole heap of these, and it's fine for extremely small work, uh, anything that you don't want to be too rigid unfortunately with small machines rigidity is what you want in fact rigidity is the shit without it you're busted so this will work and it has been working for me but i thought of a better idea instead of recreating this one you know out of steel which would have been fantastic seeing as i do have a mill um that would mean that i have to buy cutters and things like that and if you're like me you don't have that much money so i thought about it and i came up with my own version of a quick change tool post unfortunately at the end of my little excursion on coming up with a quick change tool post and thinking i was something original after a quick search on the internet it turns out i'm not that original and it's actually patented so not original after all here it is anyway please excuse the weird slits that are in it it turned out I made it too big. You will know what I mean. This is it. Crazy, I know. It's a square block. Who'd have thunk it? The idea behind it was you have your center shaft. Meow. Just with my countersunk hole there, just to suit my machine. Yours may not even have it. But that's your center post. You tighten that sucker down. There she stays. This is rigid, it doesn't move. This comes along. Ooh, I made it bloody tight, I'll tell you what. So that is a tight clearance fit. There is like, you can't see, but there's not even any movement there. So I made it pretty good. The idea is you got these holes here. I made them a fine pitch thread, so M8 by one, which is a little bit of a weird, um, bulk to find but it doesn't matter i've found it and if all else fails you can make your own but the idea is that that is your height so you shove your m8 bolt in there you tighten it down and that will raise this up your stem until you get to wherever you want then with this bolt here you tighten her up it squeezes together and clamps around that center post which is rigid as it, as it is because there's so much meat when I originally tightened it up, uh, she didn't move much. So it was still a little bit loose and I wasn't happy about that. So after a little bit of screwing around, I just thought bugger it, I'll just start slitting away until it works. So that's why you'll get this queer angle looking slit here and this one over here. The problems that I foresee with that is that yes, it's getting pretty close to that line. So a lot of the uh, force is being put right through there and i expect it'll crack at some point in time a good time down the line because there's a lot of meat there it is a big piece which is kind of the added feature of it that's kind of the only real downfall of this i mean if you're going to make it yourself you want as little clearance here between this and your center hole otherwise that's more clamping pressure you need and um, you don't really want to be clamping too hard or anything crazy in here the more you have to clamp the more this has to move and the greater the chances of uh, your stress fracture in here 
the bigger this circle is, the better. Obviously a nice, big, rigid, thick piece of goodness like that sucker is what you want. You don't want something tiny in the center like these little things. See the freaking distant, distant, uh, difference? Distance. I mean, it's a massive difference. It'll work. The only thing that I'm missing, and you guys have probably spotted it, and are thinking, how the bloody hell is he going to mount a tool in there, is a single tool holder. So, that, unfortunately, with my stupid slit, is where I will mill my little way in there for my tools to sit in, and then I can shim them up and down, not shim, but, you know, move it up and down and find my center height. And then you can leave the bolt in there, where it is, you know, put a nut on there, whatever you want to do, tighten it down just like a normal quick change tool post, and then make up a bunch of other ones and just slot it down on your shaft here. Off you go again. You got a whole heap of quick change tool posts that you made yourself. I think that's fun, something that I will do if this works, and I'm pretty sure it will, because it already goes redonkulously tight on there. You cannot move it. It's tight as bugger, and I'm barely even putting anything on that bolt. Like I'm not heaving on it, I'm barely turning it. And she goes tight as buggery. So I reckon it should work. So from here, all I'm gonna do is show you guys just milling that slot and probably laughing at me because I'm sure it'll chatter and do a whole heap of fun stuff as soon as I hit that slip that I made. But after that, we'll uh, stick her in the lathe and show you that she actually does work. So stay tuned or make your own. Well, here it is, the very last pass, and I've had as bad as much fun as a nun in a brothel. It has been terrible. I'm not saying this is a bridge port or anything, but it could do with a little bit more oomph. Um, when cutting mild steel, at the moment I can only make it down about one and a half mil before she really hates life. So that's what I've been rolling with, one and a half mil cuts, so this is the last one, and we'll get it done. Don't get me wrong, for what I paid for it, this little mill is doing its job, but we'd all go for something bigger if we had the money. So let me get this done, and um, I'll show you where we're at. Here we are, straight off the mill. You can see here where I wasn't paying attention and eyeballed it. Winning. Still perfectly fine on the other side. She uh, chatted around here, which I knew it was going to do because of those slits. Another win on my behalf. But all in all, she's worked well. I just hit it with a file to get rid of burrs, because burrs are knives and not tools. Um... This is uh, conveniently the fit that I was after, so... Uh-oh. 
Fail. Try again. Oh, yeah, like a glove. Yeah, you can't buy that fit. That's a winner. So that's just for my quarter inch tools. Tool still. Like this bad boy. In she goes. Booyah. Or, you actually come there, champion. I can chuck him straight in there. She may need some shimming. She's um a little bit low. But, you know, the bigger tool steals. Plenty of room. So from now, all I've got to do is my holes in the top uh, for my set screws. Done. Last little bit. I've just remounted it back into my vise and I just got some center holes there. I'm not really going to go off them. I don't know why I did it, but I'm going to use the uh, first hole there and then just go 15 mil further along to get my four holes for my set screws, which will hold the tools in. Pretty much it. Um, point tonight, if you're going to make this yourself, is that if you want to make it reversible, which you can do, after all, everything should be aligned, uh, should uh, be parallel for either way. So there's no reason why you can't just flip the entire tool over, which will give you a, a left and right-handed turning tool in the one. The only fallback from that is you need to have your height adjusting holes here all the way through. Um, and you'll have to put your set screw holes top and bottom which I guess takes away from your overall rigidity ever so slightly but no more than my potential screw ups meow and meow so yeah I reckon I'll do 90% of my turning um, left hand side so you know I'm gonna leave it as is and if need be I'll make another one so let's get these holes done fucking dodge well there she is all done and in the blink of an eye I'll uh, show you what she looks like 
all done up and painted and looking schmick as. But from my mistakes, I can say that um, don't slit it down the side. Stupid focus. Um, yeah, make sure that center hole is as tight as possible to your mating shaft. And consider well, what kind of thread that you want through the side for your lockings. So, you, you know, you got your clearance. Okay, so there's shit in there, but that's a clearance hole to your threaded side so it can actually clamp down. So I used a coarse thread here so I could really put some torque into it. Turns out I didn't need that much, but you need that clearance hole here. Otherwise, it just won't clamp down. You'll be screwing a thread into a thread and it will just keep going. It will just be like a normal threaded hole. It may sound simple to some people, but I guarantee someone will F it up. Um, that's pretty much it. So yeah, like I said, if you wanted to make it um, twistable, turnover, or ball to left and right hand cutting, then you know, you can, well, I suppose it's fine uh, just turning your tool around the other way, but for me, going one way, dumbass, uh, I'll have to flip it. So, winning. I reckon she'll work well. I'll show you how she works after she's all together. Stay tuned.